We are a mere two weeks away from season 17. Today's video, I want to take some time to actually draw some attention to certain weapons that are looking to be potent next season. Weapons that I think many of us don't really use all that much in the current sandbox. And that is actually trace rifles and machine guns. Both of these weapon types are getting massive buffs. Trace rifles are actually looking at getting a 20% buff against non-red bar combatants. They're also increasing the ammo picked up per special ammo brick from 18 to 30. And yes, Bungie also confirmed that this buff will include retrace path. Machine guns are also going to be getting a pass, doing more damage against bosses. But probably the biggest change is to Xenophage, which is getting a ginormous bump from 100 rounds per minute to 120. They're also increasing damage by 40% against PV enemies for both Xenophage and Grand Overture. Needless to say, guys, we've got some weapons to talk about. First, let's talk about Grand Overture, because I think a lot of people just wrote this weapon off as being bad. We did some damage testing a while back, and Bungie has actually made a number of changes to Grand Overture. Now, one set thought that this was actually a ginormous nerf because originally you would blow your entire load once you got those full stacks of missiles. Now, though, it shoots in a volley of five. But Bungie's actually making a change here to Grand Overture where they're reducing the time between bursts when in missile mode. So it'll now fire even faster in a continuous burst. And tapping it, will fire it in that five round burst. And in my opinion, this is the best of both worlds for Grand Overture because just blowing your entire load wasn't necessarily good, especially in things like Grandmaster Nightfalls where things are really spread out. But at the same time, when you got to a boss or maybe a champion that's really thick, maybe you do want to blow your whole load. So I like the fact that we now have the ability to pick and choose when and where we can blow our load. Now, considering that we're going to be getting champion mods for machine guns and trace rifles, I think Grand Overture is positioned quite nicely, especially with that big buff that's being handed out to it by 40%. And in the past, we used to just default to whatever the best weapon was. But now that we have a Q burns, dude, Arc Week, Grand Overture, all day long. And considering we have an exotic catalyst where the missile explosions blind combatants and those defeated by the missile impacts will then explode. Guys, come on. Quit riding this machine gun off. It's going to be fantastic next season. Now, next up, we're going to talk about Xenophage because this one is an obvious one. That rate of fire being increased, that damage being increased. The fact that Xenophage is probably one of the easiest heavy weapons to use in the game. And now you're going to be able to slot on champion mods. Dude, Xenophage was the king at one time. And with this big bump in its damage on solar weeks, it is very probable Xenophage will be my go-to option every single time. It has no damage fall off. It essentially has explosive rounds and you can combine it with things like Actium War Rig for continuous fire. Without a doubt, Xenophage will most likely be king next season. Now, I don't think it's going to be to the point where people are going to choose it over things like Grand Overture, especially when you start to consider burns. Maybe in things like the new dungeon or raids, but those burns really play a pivotal role in what I choose for my loadout. So Xenophage is the obvious option for me for a machine gun that deals solar damage. Grand Overture being the obvious option for Arc. But what about Void? Well, there's a few options out there. You got things like Commemoration, Corrective Measure, which by the way, if you have the time loss version of Corrective Measure, there are some fantastic roles you can get on that weapon and you'll have the ability to slot Adept Mods. And I would say Corrective Measure will probably be your best bet as you could just run those raids back and get you a pretty decently roll of that machine gun. Now, some other machine guns to really consider before we move into Trace Rifles. Number one, Recurrent impact. This is actually a craftable weapon this season. I really like this machine gun for a number of reasons. Number one, land tank grants massive resilience and damage resist against combatants every time you get a kill. And of course, we have artifact mods this season, which expands that duration even more. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to get those mods back next season, but regardless, land tank on its own is still very, very good. And the rolls you can get on this weapon are also very good. Headstone, firing line, one for all, frenzy, subsistence, fill prep, stats for all. We haven't directly reviewed this machine gun, but we probably will. It does deal stasis damage, and I think if you lean into that, especially if you're rocking like a headstone build with stasis, recurrent impact can serve you very, very well. And again, it's craftable. Now, the other machine gun that I hope you hung on to, which is exactly why my vault is always slammed, and that is the Seventh Seraph Saw. Yeah, when was the last time you saw this thing? Now, the reason why I hung on to this, more specifically this roll right here, is because of Disruption Break. Now, stated from the TWAB, again, machine guns and trace rifles, it could be any of the champion mods. But if it is Barrier, this Seventh Seraph of with disruption break is poised to be quite nasty. Combine this with things like Izanagi, you get that powwow, barrier popped, and then follow up with a clean kinetic shot that's dealing increased damage. Again, you never know what's going to be meta, right? We'll see though. Seven Seraph also has a number of very good traits, things like Vorpal, Firing Line, Fill Prep, Clown Cartridge, Auto Loading Holster, right? There's a lot of great things here that can work for it, and it's really a great legendary option for those arc burns. Now, there's a number of other machine guns out there, including things like Avalanche, Archon's Thunder, which 
which by the way is going away this season the swarm however the ritual weapon for next season will be a new machine gun called chain of command now i personally think it's just going to be a very basic machine gun but i could be wrong right bungie kind of goes back and forth they're like yo ritual weapons are just supposed to be just slightly better than some other weapons but not as good as things like adept weapons or even like craftable weapons but at the same time bungie could be like yo new machine gun is dropping with killing tally and everybody would lose their mind regardless though whether it's barrier champions unstoppable champions or overload champions i'm really excited to see this machine gun meta now let's talk about trace rifles oh when was the last time outside of like divinity you were like yo grandmaster nightfall this week bring your trace rifle said no one ever there's a couple of quirky ones out there that use things like agar scepter which i'm a big fan of agar scepter but i do want to talk about some questions that i have about trace rifles and most notably champion mods like how is divinity going to work considering it already stuns overload champions what if we get anti-barrier trace rifle now it's a good chance divinity will not be able to stun both barrier champions and overload champions we've seen it with things like ariana's vow when we get things like unstoppable hand cannon ariana is still very much an anti-barrier weapon and nothing else so i'm under the assumption divinity will still be its own thing and of course will still be very very good for what it does divinity is really one of the best weapons for overload champions and of course that debuff and everything else that goes with it super nasty but let's talk about some of these other trace rifles first up agar scepter agar's is a weird one look i love stasis build with agar's right that sexy sleek design the ability to freeze the will given form with exotic catalyst where you can drain your super energy overflows the magazine and empowers the beam with bonus damage here's the issue with agar scepter though it's stasis and not that i have anything against stasis but for some reason champions have something against stasis it is so aggravating stunning a champion to then accidentally freeze them with things like stacy or some other means of stasis to just have them become unstunned and you're doing a fraction of the total damage that you're supposed to be doing now i don't know if this is like an intentional design from bungie but that's honestly why i don't really use stasis as much unless it's like a nightfall that doesn't have as many champions take like last way for instance where i'm really relying on turrets to lock down those wyverns that are trying to push and those other ads they're still champions and of course it's very aggravating when i actually get a stun on them to just have them become unstunned because stacy started tapping them stasis is a weird one right and so with it being so strange i don't really know how good agar scepter is actually going to be still fantastic for locking down ads honestly one of the most unique weapons in the game however will it be a weapon you can effectively use against champions well maybe having champion mods on things like agar scepter will actually fix this problem and allow it to actually be usable and not unstun those champions it's only time will tell guys we'll see what plays out other trace rifles include things like wave splitter prometheus lens cold heart which by the way is getting a buff cold heart will now be able to create ionic trace and collecting that ionic trace grants energy to all your abilities they also increase the grace time before damage ramps clears from 0.113 seconds which was incredibly low to one second prometheus lens will now be able to apply a more useful burn to targets and wave splitter will now have a default damage output that will be the same as that old middle tier and collecting that orbit power will grant 10 seconds of maximum power and caps at 20 seconds and it will also be able to suppress targets while granted this mode by picking up an orb needless to say fellas don't overlook the exotic trace rifles and dude they have been forgotten the bungee is purposely doing this because they like to take weapons that everyone just forgets about and go yo meta now final trace rifle i want to bring up is none other than retrace path now you could still get this weapon from dares of eternity and this trace rifle is also getting a buff with our other trace rifles but the random rolls on this thing are fantastic and it really depends on the champion mod we're gonna have present if we do have of course barrier champion mods for trace rifle look at that man disruption break genesis all day long this is such a fantastic combo you like it on arbalist well what lie you're gonna get it again with retrace and by the way arbalist is getting a nerf so don't think we're not gonna be looking at other options for dealing with barrier champions still gonna be good but it will be doing substantially less damage other roles that are still very good for damage one frost subsistence or feeding frenzy golden tricorn frenzy as well on this thing and considering that it's a legendary you'll have flexibility to use that exotic in those other slots i can imagine having retrace path in one slot xenophage in the other slot and whatever in my kinetic slot right and just go to pound town so guys get a good roll of this weapon before next season as well as all the other weapons we mentioned on this list let me know in the comments below which one of these weapons you're most excited about well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right